Have you ever wondered why you never hear or see of any big video projects like commercials, TV shows, music videos, whatever, being shot on a Nikon camera? Pretty much all of their main competitors at this point are heavily steeped in the world of professional video. Canon and Sony, Panasonic Lumix is definitely there, Fuji making a huge step in that direction recently. So. Why not Nikon? We know these still images from these mirrorless Nikon Z cameras can be phenomenal, and the video stats, on paper at least, are there. The Z6 and Z7, both Marks 1 and 2, can be upgraded to shoot ProRes RAW over HDMI, so that sounds pretty legit to me. I'm Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to figure out why that is. Why don't we see any big cinematic video productions shot on any of these Nikon cameras? Is there a clear cut answer? Is it just a matter of taste, brand loyalty? I don't know. So today, I wanted to build up one of these Nikon Z cameras in a way so that it's really ready for some cinematic video capture. And what better way to do that than with anamorphic lenses. And we can do this because super awesome companies like Suray exist who are rolling out full frame front anamorphic glass in all sorts of various lens mounts including Nikon Z. So I have the 50 and 75 millimeter, both T2.9, 1.6X stretch factor anamorphic primes in Z mount that will illuminate this camera's full frame sensor. Chef's kiss. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using a Nikon Z7 with that ProRes RAW update, which we'll get to in a second. But that means I'm gonna need an external recorder on this bad Larry and Ninja V will work just fine. Also got a couple of other fixings on this rig here. I have Tiffin hot mirrors in front of the lens in this matte box. Tilted nucleus fizz motors controversially rigged on the left side of the lens. Big honking cine battery and all that makes for a pretty sufficiently outfitted Nikon cinema rig. So now that I have this built up, I'm starting to ask myself questions like, what is it going to be like using this rig for like a professional application? What's the project? How is the widescreen anamorphic format going to work for this project? And ultimately, how is my camera choice of the Nikon Z7 going to facilitate those things? if at all. Well, I'm glad I asked myself all of those hypothetical questions I already know the answer to because you're going to experience some weird quirks when recording out ProRes RAW from the Z6 or Z7 that I wanted to share with you, especially if you're adding anamorphic lenses into the mix like I did. So let's chat recording modes and yes, I'm breaking out the table for this one. Internally, the Z7 will record UHD 4K up to 30 frames per second. It's the Z7 Mark II that does the 4K 60. And it will take 1080p video up to 120 frames per second. And for both of these, you can choose between MP4 or MOV file types, both of which are 8-bit 420. Nikon has developed their own log profile and log, but this is only available externally. So your best bet for recording internally is probably to switch it to the flat color profile. So a little underwhelming there, but externally you get some better recording options. So you have the ProRes RAW update and a Ninja V or like recorder. Now it will record a much higher bit depth 10 bit 422 in a ProRes RAW container of course. And in these modes it automatically sets the color pipeline to N-Log and Nikon RAW Gamma even though it can make it seem like you can turn that off somehow. You can't. And quirkiness incoming and also kind of a huge bummer. The these raw recording modes the Z7 offers will only record 4K in the DX crop sensor mode. This is very frustrating on multiple accounts. Account 1. This makes me think that this isn't like real sensor raw video. It's just like a better recording mode that happens to take the stress off the camera and put it on the external recorder. Something that it should be able to do internally considering the inclusion of that CF Express media. I should have picked up on this when I noticed that the raw video sizes are the exact 4K and 1080 dimensions, and not something weird and seemingly arbitrary like they normally are. And frustration account number two, especially in the context of this video, 
This stinks for anamorphic shooting. Maybe if I was shooting on spherical glass, shooting in a cropped in 4K wouldn't be so bad. At least it's still 4K. But a big part of shooting on anamorphic lenses is the warping, distorted characteristic they have, especially as it gets towards the edges of the frame, and you totally miss out on that with the APS-C crop. So I have to shoot ProRes in one of the 1080 FX full frame modes to get the full characteristic of these lenses. No big deal. But hold on a second. It says I'm in the FX mode, but nothing gets by this questionable filmmaker's keen eye for unwanted croppage. I noticed that even these supposedly full frame RAW modes still have a slight crop to them. I'm guessing around 1.15x. So if I was a real nut job about seeing my whole lens illumination in the picture, that's kind of annoying, but I'm not. Just regularly nutty. So, if you are planning on putting anamorphic lenses on these Nikon mirrorless cameras in such a scenario that I am, you have a couple of choices to make. You could shoot internally to the card, uncropped 4K up to 30p, 1080 up to 120, but all in kind of a lousy 8-bit 420 with baked in color. Or, you could break out the external recorder and SSD drive and shoot in a much more higher bit depth ProRes RAW. This will do 10-bit 422 4K up to 30p, but in that Nikon DX crop factor mode. And sure, you'll get your oval bokehs, you'll get your big lens flares, but you're missing out on a big part of anamorphic shooting, cropping out the edges like that, which is kind of a kick in the bokehs, if you know what I mean. You also have your ProRes RAW 1080 options, which are full frame, basically, and go up to 60p. So that way you'll get your full field of view of your lens, 60p, nice flowy cinematic slow-mo, but kind of a tough call given that loss in resolution. It really stinks. A fourth option, which is a little weird, but a good workaround for this anamorphic problem, is to just use the external recorder to let it record analog, because remember, it won't do this internally. And not in ProRes RAW or anything, probably just a regular ProRes like HQ or 422. That way, you're getting the uncropped 4K 30p from the camera. It's not ProRes RAW, it's just recording in basically the best way that it can with 10-bit color and a log profile. But the one thing I'm not sure about is if this is 10-bit 422 sampling or 10-bit 420, and the latter doesn't seem to make a lot of sense but I wouldn't be surprised. I'm guessing it's 10-bit 422. So that's all the recording mode stuff, which was definitely the major speed bump in this process. It only took me like two and a half days to navigate all that craziness. So you're welcome. But it also wasn't the only problem in this process that I ran into. That gave me a headache. There's no in-camera image de-squeeze for anamorphic lenses on any of these Nikon mirrorless cameras, which is fine. There are way more cinema-focused cameras out there that also don't do this, so you'll just have to rely on your external monitor for that. No big deal. What is going on, though, is a pretty serious delay on the rear LCD of the Z7 I, at least. I don't know about any of the others. And the external monitor over HDMI is even a little bit delayed beyond that. And this isn't something that usually annoys me, but that was annoying. Another thing, if you have external record control on in the HDMI menus, this will trigger the Ninja's recording, but not the other way around. If you stop recording on the Ninja, the Z7 still thinks it's going and won't let you enter any of the menus or do other stuff. That got me more than a few times. Lastly, I don't really have a dummy battery to get this Cine battery powering the camera. It's just the Nikon ENEL 15 in there, which drained pretty fast even when the external recorder was doing most of the work. So it sounds like I've been doing a lot of dumping on this setup which I kind of have. I really don't agree that the ProRes RAW modes are in any way limited to what you can do internally on the camera. It just makes no sense to me. But with all that being said, I really did like this pairing, even considering all the workarounds. I just found the image to have such vivid detail, even in 1080. The analog was really straightforward to work with and was pretty forgiving, and even the baked-in color stuff looked fine. Obviously, there's a little bit of banding here and there, and I shot a lot of it in neutral when flat would have worked in post even better. But the best part about this setup to me was simply just the pairing of full-frame anamorphic glass on a high-resolution full-frame image. Imager. You get those big blooming lens flares, the foreground background separation is unlike anything else. Those big huge full frame bokehs of course, 
it's just a thing in beauty. It really goes to show that lighting and lens wear are like 85% of the battle. But of course, you want to make sure that the camera that lens is going on can accommodate both of those things, that being lighting and lens wear. And in some ways, the Z7 did, and in some ways, it didn't. But I'll let you check out the rest of this test footage and decide for yourself. I hope you enjoyed those movie stars. I have no shame about that one. That is going to wrap up this video on shooting anamorphic lenses on Nikon cameras. What a wacky thing of me to do. As always, if you have any questions about the gear featured in this video or any insights about how you would approach building this rig differently, I want to hear about it. Let me know in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. And if you happen to like this video, whether it was for the nerdy video stuff or the visceral cow cinema, hit this video with a like button to let me know you liked it. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, you're the coolest. You can actually hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button that will ping your neural link whenever we post new content and you'll stop what you're doing and start watching it in a zombified trance. So people, ask yourself every once in a while, is the juice worth the 1.6x anamorphic squeeze? Think about it, and we'll see you in the next one.